I like movies. I like food. What's not to like? I will use my strength to show you that even in a small shop, you can go out and eat. Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Julian Childs, and this is my review of Cook Up a Storm. I don't watch television, so I've never seen Nicholas Tay's show, Chef Nick. But an awful lot of other people sure have, so it only makes sense that there would be a crossover from television to the big screen. Cook Up a Storm is the story of two young, handsome chefs who are on a collision course. They both work on a street popular for its restaurants, which offers a plethora of gastronomic options. The street, and therefore most of the movie, is supposedly in Hong Kong, but it looked a lot more like somewhere else. Not that it really matters. In fact, if we're honest, not much in this movie really matters other than the cooking. I'm not, and have never been, a foodie. But I do like movies, and I have to say that the cinematography during the numerous food duels was pretty impressive. I'd call it cooking porn, but that presents a number of risks, none of which I like. Know what I like the most? Uh, never mind. Let's move on, shall we? Anybody who's seen the trailer for Cook Up a Storm would know that this movie's not intended to be high drama. It's an excuse to cross platforms and hopefully make money. On that level, Cook Up a Storm succeeds. I paid money to watch it, and I was entertained. I'll even award bonus points for the appearance of the word consanguinity in the subtitles. Cook Up a Storm also gets points for the appearance of Michelle Y in an unfortunately small role. It was nice to see Anthony Wong in a small but important role. He nearly sleepwalks through it, but when necessary he makes his presence felt. I was also happy to see La Lan in a small role, because she's La Lan. In the same vein, I was unhappy to see Jim Chim, because he's Jim Chim. But not even he could ruin my enjoyment of the Chairman of Delicacy, who wore a suit that he stole from my mother's closet. I enjoyed the nods to local culture, like appreciation for food, and queuing. I even enjoyed some of the plentiful food duels. These two chefs sure seem to get into a lot of food fights. The big revelation in the movie where someone's dark secret is revealed is kinda hamstrung by the utterly nonsensical, implausible, illogical nature of the thing. But it did make me laugh, so I got that out of it. A lot of the attempts at the film having some kind of emotional impact really kinda of fall flat on their face because there is virtually no character development whatsoever in any of this movie. Any character development would have made the ending a lot more meaningful. Or just meaningful. But who cares? Now, I realize it kind of sounds like I'm, I'm hating on this movie or I didn't like it, but I enjoyed it. I did like it. I mean, I couldn't really get mad at it because its heart is in the right place. It's not trying to be anything other than what it is. It was really easy to watch, if only because the cinematography made everything look so nice. Except Jim Chim, but that's not my point. I never felt insulted by anything in this movie, except Jim Chim. If nothing else, Cook Up a Storm gets a truckload of bonus points from me because it ends with a traditional Chinese New Year greeting. It's the only movie I saw that did it this year, and they didn't even release it in Hong Kong during the Chinese New Year. I enjoyed Cook Up a Storm more than I could logically explain, but because this is an Emperor Group movie, the end credits feature an obnoxious MV of a really awful song whose only purpose is to slavishly show us as many Emperor Group artists as they could possibly shove in there. Because remember, movies aren't stories. They're promotional opportunities. You know, other than that, in the end credits, I really did enjoy this movie more than I expected. But if you like food, then you would enjoy this a whole lot because the cinematography, especially of the food stuff, is just really impressive to me because if nothing else, you never get your face that close to something when it's cooking. But in this movie, you do. If you can see it on a big screen, do it because the food looks amazing that big and that close up. Otherwise, Wait till you can rent this movie or buy a disc, or somehow otherwise pay for the privilege of watching the movie. When Cook Up a Storm gets released to home video, I'll update the description with a link where you could buy a Blu-ray or a DVD. Also in the description, you'll find a link to my Patreon page, because let's face it, these movies aren't expensive, but they're not free either. 
and I don't really get paid for doing this. If you enjoyed my review, please let me know. If you didn't, let me know. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe so that I'll have more subscribers. Thank you for watching. See you again soon.